very good morning everyone so i am suman i am a structural engineer uh, working at midas research and development center in navi mumbai india so today we will be discussing on uh, analysis and design of elevated metro structures and at finally we'll see how uh, we can use our software new feature which is irs design code so talking about metros uh, keeping in mind the rapid pace of urbanization the public transport systems should be improved uh, and the present systems face many challenges and uh, in light of this concern the mass ra rapid transport systems like metro rail uh, has emerged as one of the excellent option for major cities all across the globe especially our country like india there are many country many metros that are coming up in major parts of the country and currently there are many metros in operation and and, and uh, under construction in india so a comprehensive insights for modeling analysis and design of elevated metro structures uh, using irs design code will be discussed in this webinar so these are my these are the contents of the presentation first i'll talk about the introduction about the metro viaducts mostly this webinar will focus on elevated metro structures second let's see the load calculations uh, what are all the loads that would be coming up on metro elevated viaducts and we'll generate a midas civil model and then run through the analysis and let's discuss the results and finally after verifying the results we'll proceed to the design using irs code yeah these are some pictures which show about show metro viaducts uh, it can be a curved or you can use different construction methodologies like segmental construction or a balanced cantilever construction depends on the feasibility of the construction so a segmental construction would look like this uh, long elevated uh, viaducts provide uh, seamless connectivity so they create additional movement area without damaging the ex ex existing ground level ne transport network uh, so segmental and balanced cantilever stretches you can see uh, in india most commonly so unlike uh, road bridges the riding quality of these metros comes from the continuity of the track hence most of the metro viaducts comprises of simply supported span superstructures so if you are using uh, continuous welded rails so mostly the comfort comes from the right comfort but it additionally calls for rail structured interaction because you have those continuous uh, rails from depot to the other depot right uh, so these are some pictures so generally uh, these type of construction methodologies are used for erecting elevated metro structures first is segmental construction where the segments are precast and would be uh, erected using overhead launching girder and second it can be a balanced cantilever construction where uh, you go balanced fashion uh, in the other side of the pier and it can be a precast segmental balanced cantilever bridge or a cast in situ segments can be used and other methodologies uh, can also be used based on the feasibility of the construction like incremental launching of the girders or a full staging method so we'll focus on the segmental construction in this webinar so we'll take this sample bridge it's fairly uh, same type of bridge that you see in many metros in india so this is the longitudinal sectional detail of the bridge so 10 meters is my uh, substructure this pier height and then you have a foundation of 2 meters a isolated simple foundation and uh, pier to pier it's 30 meters is a span so and bearing to bearing i'll take it as 28.3 and some sectional details like i have assumed some sections a random sections a middle section and a support section and a diaphragm section so we'll see how we can simulate this in the software we can quickly generate the tapering part also uh, using the import feature which i'll be showing in the demonstration 
So a longitudinal section, first you have a diaphragm section at the bearing location and a small uh, uh, 250 mm cantilever slab overhang. Then you have tapered section which is changing from support to mid. Yeah. Let's talk about the uh, construction sequence. It is uh, important to understand in real construction sequence of the bridge before simulating in the software. So the main construction activities are highlighted uh, here. First is precast segments are casted. So the casting the precast segment with reinforcement and all the different segments which I've shown you the mid section, the tra taper sections, all those would be casted as per the drawing. Then on the site, first they'll start with the substructure. First the foundation is erected, then pier, pier cap. Then the erection of the segments through the launching girder. So the first the launching girder would be placed and then the segments would be lifted one by one and then there would be a temporary pre-stressing and there would be a glue and temporary pre-stressing. And then finally a post-tensioning would be done and then grouting, then the finishing works like a uh, putting the crash barriers and then next the rails and then done. Some pictures of the construction sequence. Uh, segments are casted, substructure is erected. So this is the launching where each segment is placed and aligned and uh, temporary pre-stressing is done. And they are kept on the substructure and then post-tensioning would be performed. And then the final structure is ready. So let's jump into the software now. Let's start with the modeling. I'll open Mira Civil. So there's a new project. Go to Works Tree. Uh, I hope all are familiar with uh, Midas Civil User Interface. So these are all the main tabs. So let me start with the material properties. Click on Add. And here I'll select a grid for my superstructure. So IRS code is available. So I'm 50. So I'm using 2020 version. This is for my superstructure and similarly uh, I'll copy it for my substructure I'll use M40 and then a grade of steel for my tendon. So these are the properties. So if you want you can change this to none and then this is 2 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per newton m newton per mm square. Alright, so these are the material properties and section properties as these are PSE sections. I'll go to PSC tab and select one cell and you can turn on the joints you can see this bitmap image where you have this joint and the relevant uh, dimensions would be appearing here when you turn on them so you can form any type of your section and if you have in your AutoCAD then you can import from SPC so right now uh, this is a time taking process what I'll do is I'll try to import this sections from my existing model. So whatever the sections that I've shown in the PPT, I've formed them here. So mid section and uh, similarly diaphragm and support section. So if you're trying to uh, make a tapering from support to mid, I can directly select 
this option called tapered and then I can select PSC one cell I don't need to create intermediate sections I can directly import from support section import and then mid section so this forms the tapering uh, it can be a linear or a parabolic or a cubic variation so in that fashion I formed support to mid, mid to support and a cantilever slab, a general section and a pier top, pier I have taken a circular section of 2 meters and footing, an isolated footing of 8 by 5 and then a diaphragm cut section to accommodate the seismic arista so let's start with the modeling. I'll show you a manual modeling. First, I'll just create a node here. So this is my first node. And I'll use extrude. Let me create the substructure. M40 and then I'll select the footing. The Z direction it's 2 meters click apply select this note and 3 meters is my footing pedestal not 3 meters it's uh, I'll assume 1.3 and then the PO column height of Take it as 6.05. Turn on the tree menu too, such that I can work with both the menus. So this is my peer section. Select a peer tapering part. So I can change the I and J end. So and then the straight portion which is of 0.2 alright so this is one substructure select this uh, and there would be a seismic cluster at the top let's assume the de uh, depth of it as 0.9 and from substructure to the next substructure it's 30 meters I'll try to copy the elements the x direction 30 at the rate 2 oh just a minute sorry this is 2 at the rate 30 So I'll be modeling two spans. Uh, so you have these three substructures. Let's start with the superstructure modeling. So I'll create a node, uh, some something like a 25 mm. So I'll translate. I'll copy this. In the x direction, I'll take it 25 mm, and in I'll take it as so the depth of the superstructure is 
2.1 meter and x direction I'll just take 0.025 mm so from here I'll take the cantilever length as x direction 215.25 so this is M50, click apply. So I have assumed uh, all these dimensions uh, randomly like uh, a cut point four two five can be one cut section and then then can be a diaphragm section and from here let's take it point five five of a diaphragm section all right from here let's create a support section of 3.1 and then you have support to mid tapering which is of 3 meters and then you have mid section which is 5 times at the rate 3 meters which is of 15 meters length and then the same okay so in this way you have to model the superstructure for now uh, uh, I'll skip this part I'll open a model where the superstructure and the substructure modeling and those elements are already modeled. So here only the modeling is present. So these are beam elements and no boundary condition nothing so we'll create the boundary conditions and then the loads uh, so the relevant materials are assigned for the superstructure it's M50 M40 for the substructure and M35 for the foundation and these are all the sections so you can see the superstructure so this is the cut diaphragm section so where the seismic arrestor would fit in then you have a cantilever slab, cantilever portion then the support section uh, let me change the color of the material is fine then you have support to mid the other way mid to support then you have the mid sections so everything is symmetric and peer peer cap top all the sections footing and footing pedestal so this completes the modeling now let's start with the boundary conditions so I'll go to boundary click on define supports let me fix the bottom 
of the isolated footing. So here I'll be creating the boundary groups because I'll be doing a construction stage analysis. So I'll select the supports, click apply. So these are fixed supports and then at the bearing location we have to create the elastic links. So I'll click on elastic link. So I'll select the general type, create a boundary group called pairings. So I'll be assuming as elastomeric bearings where horizontal stiffness I'll take it as 5000 kilonewton meter in the transverse directions. I'll copy the elastic links. So the distance between bearing to bearing is 28.3. So these are two links similarly on the other span. the site. So this completes the eight bearings. So I have, I, I have to group them under the bearings boundary group. Change this to bearings. So, coming to the connection between the seismic arrester and the and the superstructure. So, whenever a wind load is or a transverse load is applied. So this seismic block will resist that. So for that I'll create an elastic link with axial stiffness at one end and actually free on the other end. But the Y stiffness I'll give a high stiffness. So I'll create another boundary group. So these are my two links and then I'll release the axial to create a simply supported condition. All right. So these are my elastic links. Let's go for a rigid link now. So the bearing top nodes needs to be connected to the superstructure for the full force transfer. I'll create a boundary group. And the distance is 28.3 and this is my master node and I'll select the slave nodes at the top bearing nodes. So we have two rigid links. Click apply. And then connecting connecting the uh, seismic arrester to the superstructure. So let's select this as a master node.
Uh, just a moment, there is a technical problem. Just give me a moment. Yeah, so I think I think some people are not able to uh, listen to my voice. What you have to do is you have to reconnect it. So try to close the go to webinar and then try to re-log in into the site. Yeah, so let me connect the superstructure to the seismic arrestor. apply so this is one link so this would be my master, master note so slave notes I need to manually select from the selection option So this completes the boundary conditions for the uh, for this metro bridge. So let me turn on all the boundaries and show you like how is the force transfer. So first you have a superstructure and all the forces would be transferred to the bearing top nodes. From bearing top nodes you have elastic links which are your bearings. From there uh, yeah, here for the substructure force transfer you need to create rigid links. So you can see the superstructure to the substructure it's only connected to seismic arrestor. So we'll create this links, rigid link and let's select the top of the pier and then this as master node and let me copy it to the other side and then the bottom notes yeah. so similarly I'll connect this bottom bearing notes All right. So from superstructure, bearing top, bearing, and then to the substructure. And here you have a seismic arrestor, and then this stiffness is you can display the elastic link. So elastic link stiffnesses would be applied in the local direction. So in Y and X I have restrained this link and the other side I have restrained only Y. So that would be a simply supported condition but mostly seismic arrestor will resist the forces in the Y direction. Let's go to the loads now. So I'll go to load. First we have to create a list of static loads. So before going to that slide, let me show you one slide. Yeah. So for a metro structure, so these are all the loads that needs to be considered. Uh, many loads act on this metro bridges. Some of the main loads are pointed in this slide. First is your dead load, self weight and SIDL, live loads, metro train load or other live loads. And if you have a curved bridge, force due to curvature and then the longitudinal forces like traction and braking. Temperature loads can be of two types, mostly uniform temperatures, seasonal variation and the day variation. The wind loads, longitudinal transverse direction, earthquake loads, 
can be a longitudinal transverse or vertical direction earthquake loads and many other loads would act on this metro structures like derailment roads or a long welded rail forces, nosing forces, differential settlement or a vehicle collision load. So all these loads needs to be manually calculated and the, and the forces can be applied in the software. So let me create a list of static loads. First, I'll start with dead load. Add. So, please select the type uh, correctly because uh, the auto generation of the load combinations depends on the type that you have selected and the relevant load factor would be applied. SIDL. So I'm not taking all the loads, but uh, major type of loads I'll consider in this modeling. Let me take pre-stress. Right. So in this fashion, you have to add all the static load cases. So to save time, what I'll do is I already have those names. So. So I'll take it from another model where I've already created them. We go to MCT command shell, directly paste the static load cases. So these are all my static load and their types. So we have temperature uniform, temperature gradient, wind loads, and then the construction steel loads. Uh, which we'll detail see and then breaking and then derailment loads. You can create the relevant load groups. So those groups can be seen here. So we have created the boundary groups and we can create the structure groups. So let's create span 1 and span 2. So let's categorize into structure groups. So this is my span one. Deactivate. This is my span two and there is an expansion joint of 50 mm. So let's go to the groups. Before that, uh, you have to create these load groups. So I'll create few load groups like self weight, so which we'll be using in the construction stay analysis as ideal and pre stress. So I'll go to self weight. Before that structure, structure type. So you can turn on this convert self weight into masses. I'll give it as minus one and select the load group. Click add. So this consider the self weight for the whole model. So next I'll add a SIDL load. So 
So as ideal I can take it as minus 40 kilonewton per meter and apply it on the entire superstructure. Click apply. And then the pre-stress. So So we'll be considering a post-tensioning scheme. So the plan and elevation layout of the tendons are in this fashion. So I'll assume a plan variation as well as an elevation variation. So this can be easily implemented in the software using a tendon template which I'll be showing you. So before that we need to fix the coordinates of the tendons. So I only try to fix at the end and at the middle and have a curvature so that can be implemented through tendon template and these are some of the coordinates let's see how to do that in the program so in span 1 uh, I'll leave the cantilever slab so I'll create new groups like span 1 girders span two girders activate and I'll deactivate I'll deactivate them and then group this span one girders the moment so there are some nodes which have come up so these are my span one span two girders so for inputting the tendon I'll go to structure tab the PSC bridge I'll be using this tendon template so let me give a name a span one so I'll select the span one girders so these are my assigned element numbers and you can see the plan view and the elevation view and the sectional variation for each of these elements so I'll click add and here I'll select this type curve 4 where I need to give this three coordinates and then uh, this distances so for tendon 1 so I'll have four layers of pre-stressing that means eight tendons so for the first layer give the plan layout Let's assume 6.1 as we have tapering uh, in plan and elevation so that's what I'm giving I'm assuming some random values So the tendon property is not assigned. Let me add a tendon property. Let's take fifteen point two nineteen strands and point one IRC eighteen. Uh, this is same as IRS code.
just a moment. This is 2.4. All right, so this is my elevation and plan view. I'll copy this to the other side. Click on copy. And I'll invert the profile in the plan direction. All right, fine. Let's create uh, another layer of pre stressing. Take it as one point one nine nine six. We'll copy this. invert the profile in plan so this is my second uh, layer of pre-stressing similarly the third Alright, so this is my third layer of pre-stressing in the plan and elevation. I'll copy this. Invert the profile. Take it as 6.25. So these uh, values have already calculated in my Excel. So what should be the eccentricity based on my profile? Okay, fine. So this completes the fourth pre-stressing. So we have four layers of pre-stressing and this is for the span one. So as the span one and span two are symmetric, so these are my tendons in the elevation and plan view. So a fairly complex tendon profile has been generated automatically. I'll uh, assign this to my span one. Uh, elements I'll click apply so you can see eight profiles are generated now I'll uh, assign this to the span to girders and I'll give a name span to click apply so these are my 16 profiles uh, span one and span 2 so if I display so these are all my tendons so if you want to check this in a sectional wise you can go to properties click on stiffness and at the mid section you can turn on the tendons in the duct hole 
So this is my variation and in, in the diaphragm section Uh, I think some very stressing. Uh, yeah. The stand in input is not right. Maybe I have made a, some mistake. So, this is how you can uh, create the tendons. And, and then you can apply the pre-stress through this pre-stress function so I'll select pre-stress then the pre-stress load group for now I'll select all these spans and change the unit I'll give it 1400 MPA as the begin stress click add now I can go to the tables and then sort it out into different load groups. So I already have some load groups. So you need to create PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4, four layers of sequential pre-stressing. So let me try to make the load groups from MCT see I have this load groups like PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4 I can sort the first two pre-stressing as PS1 Similarly, uh, I can sort them for the second span. So in this fashion, you have to sort these load groups such that you can call in the construction stage definition. And then you have this temperature uniform rise loads. So you can go to temperature, element temperature or, or a system temperature, increasing the temperature for the whole system, like 20 degrees, click add and then temperature fall minus 20 click right and then you can create the beam section temperature a gradient temperature so you can select the temperature gradient and you can click on PSC composite as the width of the section varies so you can click this B as section so the program automatically calculates the width and then applies this temperature gradient and then you have the wind load wind load you can apply through the element load you can directly apply to the substructure yeah then we'll discuss this CS and then you have the breaking and the derailment load. let me open a model right now uh, to save time So here I have applied this wind load longitudinal transverse and the substructure wind load so this you can calculate from the IS 875 and then the construction sequence So the construction sequence uh, for this type of metro bridges uh, it is done through the launching girder overhead launching girder so once this two spans are erected then a launching girder is placed and then it will start move, move on the superstructure so all the loads would be applied on the superstructure as well as the substructure so let's assume a launching girder weight of 6000 kilonewton suppose and then there would be a middle and rear supports of this launching girders so when these are active the force would be transferred so I'll assume some values like a 3000 kilonewton 
and a thousand eight hundred and twelve hundred kilonewton. So this depends on the project and the construction uh, uh, methodology that you are using and, and the weight of your own launching girder depends on the span. So that is CS1 stage where this uh, junctions are active and then there is a position change of the middle and the rear support so the forces which are transferred would be changing and in CS3 there would be a launching preparation so the forces will change and in CS4 again there would be a change of forces where this is lifted so the reaction so the forces that are applied onto the superstructure would change something like 3500 and 1500 total amount for the launching girder weight then the first step the this part is moved and then there would be another uh, set of loads that would be applied to the superstructure then there are change of loads and then to the next substructure the force would be transferred so this forces will change in this span and then when this uh, segment is erected and the segments are aligned and temporary precessing is done all this weight needs to be transferred to the previous span so the forces will change so this needs to be simulated in the program through construction stage analysis so let's go to the program and here in CS1 I've applied this load exactly where the uh, launching girder is attached to the superstructure so at those locations I've applied these loads so I think there is some unit change okay so these are the loads So first in CS1, so we have this position of the loads and then CS2 there is a variation of the loads till CS5 as I've shown on the slides and then I have taken a construction stage live load throughout a UDL where people are working on it. So, so I think I have taken 10 kN per meter. So these are currently as static loads and then I have taken as braking load 10.1 and the derailment load of 30 kN per meter with the eccentricity. So this depends on the width of your superstructure. Let's go to the construction stage definitions. I'll go to load and construction stage define construction stage. So, so let me delete this construction uh, let me show you some construction stage definitions so if I go to load construction stage click on define construction stage I can generate first let's add CS0 and then okay and then we can click on generate from CS1 to 8 and then a final construction stage to simulate the long term effects so the same thing is uh, created in this main model so in the first stage I have taken the duration as 10 days and I have activated the element groups all of the elements and then the boundary groups the support bearings arrestors and all the rigid links and coming to the loads uh, because this is the sequential pre-stressing uh, would be implemented so the losses would be different so because of the second stressing there would be a loss in immediate loss in the first 
uh, layer of the pre-stressing. So for that you need to create some additional steps. So I have created some one day gap of additional steps like first two, three and it can be four. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, so this is CS0 and then I'll go to CS1. In the CS1 I've activated this CS1 loads which is a set of launching order forces that would be transferred to the superstructure. CS2 where I've deactivated the CS1 and the CS2 is activated. Similarly CS5 till CS5 and then till CS8. Whatever the uh, pictures that I've shown you before where the locations of the uh, forces are need to be transferred those have been simulated through this construction stages. Till CS9, CS9 I have did not activate uh, any of the element or the boundary group. All the superstructure remains the same and this whole the model remains the same but I've activated SIDL on the first day of this stage and then I've left it for 100 years to simulate the creep and shrinkage effects. And for that, you need to go to properties and define this creep and shrinkage. So M50 IRC 18 have selected. So click on show result. So this is my creep material definition for my superstructure. Similarly for substructure and the foundation and then you have compressive strength variation that I have defined through IRC 18 code. You need to give the 28 day strength and the variation of the compressive strength and the creep shrinkage would be simulated by the program using these definitions. Then you have to link this to, to your base material. So I have linked the relevant materials so this completes the time dependent material definitions. Yeah, let's see the construction stages now. CS0. So in CS0 you have this pre-stress that is activated. And then CS1, CS, CS1 you have this construction stage 1 loads and in CS2 those would be deactivated and CS2 loads would be applied till CS8. Then post CS. So this would be considered as post CS loads like wind load, temperature and the bristles. So coming to the metro loads on the superstructure, I'll assume this metro train load uh, where the axle loads are 200 kilonewtons and these are the distances. So total load can be six, uh, can be uh, yeah. So this is one axle, so it is 800 plus 800, 1600 kilonewton, uh, both the tracks. So I'm assuming two tracks. So 18% would be your braking load and 20% can be your tractive force. So total longitudinal load uh, comes up to 10.1. So I'll go to load, click on moving load, select India and in the vehicles I can define a user defined vehicle. So IRS code is implemented and you can select add standard and then select the IRS and if you have any railway loading. But as this is a metro bridge I have used a user defined vehicle. So the distances as I've shown you, so the 200 kilonewton axles have been applied. Now I'll create a traffic line lane. So the track one, so the track one I'll take the eccentricity as minus two meters this side from the center line of the superstructure and 10% as my impact factor. Similarly on the other side you have track two. So these are my track 1 and track 2.
and then I'll link it through a moving load case the traffic line lane and the vehicles so here I have taken 0 to 2 track 1 and track 2 mind you uh, I'll be using this case of forward only moving direction because both of the trains uh, running opposite would would not be the governing case so I can select forward so this completes the moving load definition and the construction stage coming to the response spectrum uh, if you want to apply as a static earthquake you can apply create the static load cases or else you can define the response spectrum function so I have defined IS 1893 so you can directly select give your zone soil type and the importance factor so the design spectrum would be generated and then you can create this response spectrum load cases in the X Y so in the X direction I'll give the excitation angle as 0 that means there is an excitation in X and Y I'll change it to 90 degrees so perpendicular direction excitation and vertical seismic I can give, select the direction as Z and I'm taking 5% damping and the method would be SRSS or it can be CQC so the default is CQC and then for the eigenvalue analysis I'll select Lankos and 100 modes so this completes the longitudinal model of the metro viaduct and I'll run through the model clicking perform analysis you can uh, extract the SIDL through this load cases to be distinguished because SIDL has a different load factor so you can select that and you can go to the result and click on load combination so all these loads needs to be combined as per IRS code so this is the load combination table that's given in clause 11.3.3 .3. so there are many factors and this combinations are there so right now auto generation feature is in testing so uh, I have created manually first uh, a simple load combination a train moving load I've taken then the temperature went I've added all these wind loads and coming to the CS so I have taken the envelope of the CS static load cases because uh, this would be acting on the superstructure after the uh, construction of the two spans so I'll take this in the combinations and then the earthquake envelope and in the ULS I'll be taking this CS combination of the envelopes such that the superstructure would be res would be resisting the launching header loads so I'll further design I'll click on concrete design and I have to make this combination so I can select all of them and copy to concrete design so and here I'll change the type uh, as strength and serviceability and in SLS I'll in ULS I'll pull out the tendon secondary and for SLS I'll select tendon primary and tendon secondary both so this is just a sample load combination there would be many combinations like ULS 1 to 5 based on IRS code then you can go to forces beam diagrams and select the ULS turn on the legend click OK so this is my final bending movement so almost it is 70,000 so 
you don't have pre-stress here tendon primary effect because that would be used in the design calculation so you don't need to double consider in the ULS combination and in SLS so there is a consideration of the tendon primary so you can check the stresses based on the SLS combination directly from the software coming to the shear force so there's an overhang part it's a cantilever part but here there is a bearing so at the diaphragm location you have tremendous amount of shear let's see the mode shapes so we have to make sure that 90 percent of mass participation is reached in all the directions for response spectrum analysis yeah almost nine more than 90 percent so you can check the response spectrum results all right so these are my base shears that are coming up x and y Direction. Okay. Fine. You can uh, also graphically trace the train location using this moving load tracer feature. So this is my train load. So 200 kilonewton one axle would be divided into two V loads, which are your 100, 100, your track one and track two. And then you can convert this into static load case. So coming to the derailment load, uh, there are many uh, uh, considerations that you need to consider. For now, I have considered it as a UDL of 30 kilonewton per meter and breaking as then total breaking plus traction so this completes the uh, results and let's move on to the design part now so for doing the design of the superstructure so as it is a PSC we have a dedicated PSC tab here I'll go select IRS and uh, before that I have to give the reinforcement definition in the reinforcement tab in the section manager I'll select emit section for now and here you can give the reinforcement using this parameters so I've given the top and bottom reinforcement and these are my shear reinforcements the diagonal reinforcement would be used for the shear checks and torsional reinforcement for the torsional check AWT would be your uh, ALT would be your longitudinal and this would be your transverse torsional reinforcement so I'll go to PSC tab design material and select the superstructure material I'll select IRS FE500 click on parameters so here you have this stress for cross-section at construction stage so this is also very crucial as we have simulated the construction stages the program will check the stress check uh, on each construction stage whether they are in permissible limits or not so that's why we have simulated the construction stages and for the ULS we have considered the CS as a static load so that would be coming in the ULS combination so the construction uh, loads are covered through these two combinations of the ultimate uh, limit state combination and the simulation of the construction stage to check the stresses for the cross section at each stage so let's see the parameters so these are the material uh, partial safety factors for materials as per IRS select all these output parameters next uh, the design position I can select it as 10 
So you can directly select and then click apply at I and J end. Similarly output position which is a subset of design positions which can be printed in Excel format. So I've selected the tenth element. So which is at the middle I guess. Yeah. This section. And serviceability load combination as I made one, I've selected that. And then this is uh, uh, where you have the joints you can give the PSC segment assignment. Right, let's ignore it. And coming to exposure class, I'll select moderate and moderate. Give it to the tenth element. Torsional and interface geo. You can give the uh, the torsional reinforcement you can give it here. So whatever that you have given in the section reinforcement would be uh, overrated overrid by this information. You can give the torsional reinforcement and the interface here. FCK, FI and the shear area, shear connector area and then the spacing of the torsional reinforcement, longitudinal torsional reinforcement and the transverse torsional reinforcement. So this completes the definitions and then you can hit perform design. Okay, I already have the design results. So, uh, I'm running a lot of models in the same folder. Just already have a design Excel sheet that I've generated. Yeah, for the tenth element when you generate the Excel sheet. So this would be your complete uh, design report for the 10th element at I end. So these are the factors and then you have ultimate moment resistance check, negative moment resistance check if you have a negative moment, shear force, shear resistance. So shear resistance for maximum moment, minimum moment case, maximum shear case, then you have torsional resistance check, maximum torsional moment, maximum shear force and then the crack width check. And you have stresses at construction stage uh, and stress check for the load combinations, principal stress check and all this would be detailed out. I think there are some things. So a bending resistance summary would be generated shear resistance, torsional resistance. So you can check the utilization ratios here. Alright, so this completes the uh, complete analysis design and uh, uh, of Metro Viadix with respect to IRS code. So if you have any questions you can visit or raise a ticket at globalsupport.medasuser.com. Hope you have enjoyed the presentation. Thank you.